Depp. Twitter is miffed at Google. Nothing new. Rupert Murdoch is miffed at Google via Twitter. And there's a Pinterest clone that's shameless, but also kind of smart. All that and the rotating face of Sweet on the social hour. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for the Social Hour is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is the Social Hour with Sarah Lane and Amber MacArthur, episode 43, recorded Monday, January 16th, 2012. This episode of The Social Hour is brought to you by Squarespace.com, the fast and easy way to create a high-quality website or blog. For a free trial and 30% off your new account for three months, go to Squarespace.com and use the offer code SOCIALHOUR1. And by Audible.com. To download a free audiobook of your choice, go to audiblepodcast.com slash socialhour. Hey, everybody. Welcome to The Social Hour, episode 43 from Petaluma Twit World Headquarters at the Brick House in Petaluma. It's been a long time since I've been here. I'm Sarah Lane. And I'm Amber MacArthur from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. And it's been a, a couple of weeks, maybe even longer, maybe three or four weeks since I've been here. Yeah. And we're back together. Uh, indeed, indeed. It's, um, it seems like it's been longer than... I don't know. I guess, Amber, just because December was kind of crazy. I was in and out of town. You've been doing a lot of travel. And then, of course, last Monday, for anybody who watched the show, uh, I was uh, from our stage at CES, which at the time was still being put together. It just seems like a lot has happened since we've had a regular show. It's always like that. You know, especially, I think, with the holidays, and it runs right into pretty much into CES, and it's just so busy. So you have that one month of chaos. Uh, but uh, I don't know about you, Sarah. I'm happy to be home for a while and uh, be able to kind of get into some type of routine, which I haven't had for many weeks now. I hear you. I hear you. Well, um, welcome back, everybody, <laughs> to, to another regular show. Um, let's get right into some of the top social stories of the week. Um, this is actually something that uh, the folks on TNT, which I'm a part of, talked about last week, uh, Google search rankings. We all know kind of how Google search works, but Google last week decided to introduce a social aspect to, to Google search that has got a few other companies miffed. Uh, yes, uh, particularly Twitter. So uh, Twitter has come out and said that uh, um, they don't agree with uh, these particular changes. They think that they're unfair. Uh, now, if you were to go onto Google and you were to search something, and let's say you were a member of Google+, Plus, like we are Google's social network, uh, you could possibly find uh, postings that people within your network had made within search results. So there's a few other tweaks as well. Um, again, Twitter kind of feeling that this is a little bit unfair. And while I do understand uh, Twitter's standpoint, I mean, I think it makes sense for Google to want to do something like this to kind of beef up their social network being Google+. Plus. Absolutely. It's, um, it's interesting. I've been playing around with Google search just to see how it affects me and if it's annoying. Um, you know, my general stance on this is it is opt out, meaning that if you're logged into Google, which you first of all have to be in order to get social search results um, mm-hmm. in, in your search pages. So... I guess if you didn't want to be logged into a Google account, then this wouldn't affect you. But that's sort of a, I don't know, it's kind of a shaky argument just because so many people have Gmail accounts and don't necessarily understand how that affects them if they're logged into Google. Um, But uh, if you opt out, then this doesn't have to affect you either. I think the problem most people have, and it's the same problem that Facebook has had when they offer privacy settings or things change that become opt-out is not enough people are informed about how it works and how to toggle uh, your own settings to get the results you want so that opt-out in many ways just becomes the norm uh, for people. And, you know, that's an issue. It's not so much an issue for me, but I understand why it's an issue for other people. And I certainly understand why Twitter says, listen, I mean, news is breaking on Twitter all the time. And if you're just going to let Google+, Plus, for example, uh, results float to the top, that's not really how the web is working. It's, you know, it's almost artificially um, uh, inflating the, the stuff that shouldn't actually be top results. Yeah, I mean, I guess at the end of the day, though, if you think about it, uh, if you're searching something on Google, we have to, I suppose, remember that it, it is Google. <laughs> 
<laughs> what I mean by that is that, um, you know, Google definitely has the right to kind of not necessarily do everything that they want to do. But I think that your point of them communicating this a little bit better to the community would have been a smart uh, move. However, I think we've all seen that search is just going more social all of the time. So it's just a natural step to, for Google to go in this direction. And uh, and unfortunate, you know, that, um, you know, for Twitter, I suppose. But I don't know, Sarah, even maybe it's just my habits. I, I feel like I use, I don't want to say I use search less and less, um, but sometimes I, I, I feel like I, um, it, it's rare that I spend a lot of time on Google. What about you? Yeah, I, I know what you mean. I, I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with Google Plus these days. In fact, I've, I'm kind of making a concerted effort to, to get back into the swing of things because I was sort of stagnant there for a while and I, I want to like it more. So yeah, I'm sort of, I'm, I'm trying. And so that portion of Google is so different than the Google search that I use without even thinking about Google branding at all. I mean, what I, for example, I bought a, I bought like an over the air antenna over the weekend because I wanted to watch something on network TV. Okay, it was the Golden Globes. And and I just, you know, I didn't want to go somewhere and, and I didn't want to watch it, you know, in like a little uh, Justin TV window on my laptop. I wanted it on my TV. Anyway, I bought this antenna and I talked about it on Google Plus and someone said, well, what, what, what antenna, you know, what's the brand? So I did a Google search and sure enough, I found it. Although my Google Plus entry about the antenna was part of my search results, which was kind of weird. Uh, but I thought to myself, gosh, it's been a while since I actually searched for a brand on Google Plus and I had bought it at Radio Shack and it's like, I actually would have been better off just going to Radio Shack's website because I got so much junk uh, mm -hmm. based on, you know, my, my keywords. I don't, uh, yeah, I don't do, I don't think that much searching either, Amber. And I certainly don't go to google.com. I mean, when people talk about the Google doodles, I always yeah. have to go, oh, you know, it's, it's like it's never something that I would see normally because I've got little Google uh, search box in, you know, either Firefox or my Chrome browsers. Yeah, I mean, I, I think with the popularity, too, of different social networks, I used to use Google a lot more when I would, say, want to find out what restaurant to eat at or uh, possibly what hotel to stay in. But uh, because I, I rely more on those social networks, then I tend to go to those specific networks, even if I want to look at reviews and go to, um, you know, a site that um, where people are uh, reviewing certain things, I may go there as my, my top destination. And, and making Google less relevant to me, I mean, uh, clearly I use lots of different Google products and services, but I wouldn't put search up there as one of the top. Now, we are uh, maybe an exception to the rule, uh, but, but I find the social search element that Google has released, it, it just doesn't impact me in a really significant way. Yeah, me either. All right. Well, speaking of uh, <laughs> speaking of Twitter um, and, and people oh getting boy. sort of... Okay. So last week we talked about... Was it last week or two weeks ago that we talked about old Rupert Murdoch uh, joining Twitter? As I Rupert Murdoch, I think it was two weeks ago, also, and it was you know it's hey people join Twitter all the time, but he is a pretty big public figure, obviously very successful, he's responsible for a lot of companies. So we talked about uh, Murdoch joining Twitter and the fact that he had tweeted something that he had quickly taken down, and it was like huh, he's <laughs> learning the same lessons that we've all been learning for the last few years. Well, Rupert Murdoch has become a um, pretty big fan of of speaking his mind on Twitter. If you read his feed, well, he talks about all sorts of stuff, but one of his recent attacks is against Google <laughs> and the fact that um, anybody who's been following the SOPA and the PIPA, um, uh, uh, I, I was about to say nonsense, you might not agree with me, but um, the bills that, um, that uh, some uh, people are very up in arms over uh, being passed through Congress. Rupert Murdoch is uh, in favor of SOPA and certainly um, feels that uh, Google is influencing the American government, specifically Barack Obama and the White House, who have come out against SOPA um, as of late, um, as saying, uh, let me pull up uh, one of the... Um, <laughs> One of the, okay, so here we go. <clears throat> this, is, this is his words. So Obama has thrown in his lot with Silicon Valley paymasters who threaten all software creators with piracy. Plain thievery. Next tweet. Piracy leader is Google, who streams movies free, sells advertisements around them. No wonder pouring millions into lobbying. Now, of course, this is 140 characters, but you kind of get the gist of what he's talking about. So uh, slaying some mud, Google's way. It, to the point where Google's actually responding to Rupert Murdoch saying, you know, this 
this guy, he's, 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 he's way out of line. Um, I, I'm surprised. I really am surprised that, uh, that this is the, the avenue that, that Mr. Murdoch has taken. Amber, are you? <laughs> I'm a little surprised, although I find it entirely entertaining to follow his tweet stream because uh, clearly he's a new user to Twitter and oftentimes he makes little mistakes and uh, doesn't realize necessarily how to at people. <laughs> so um, to me, that's been uh, maybe the more interesting part of his communication. But, uh, you know, he's an opinionated person, always has been. I'm sure he's loving this new form, you know, a really captive audience of people who are uh, equally as opinionated, if not more, uh, to be able to respond and take part in the conversation. And um, so I, I think it's uh, it's been interesting to see how he's kind of jumped on board because I think we've seen this before, Sarah, with uh, uh, different kind of executives, people who have maybe signed on to Twitter. It makes a lot of splash in the headlines. We know that uh, uh, Michelle Obama, uh, for example, just signed on, but I doubt she's going to ever write anything controversial. And then you have someone with, like Rupert Murdoch um, who sort of has free reign here to say whatever he wants. Right, exactly. It's um, I, th it, it, I get the sense that it's like part... Uh, Rupert Murdoch enjoying himself, um, part just to kind of stir the pot a little bit. Um, the last time we checked in with him, oh, I think he had like 20,000 followers. He's got 142,000 now. So people are paying attention. I mean, for the entertainment, uh, you know, or because they agree with him or because they vehemently disagree with him, um, all sorts of reasons. I did actually like... Um, and I'll just read a couple more tweets and then we'll be done with this. Rupert Murdoch says, uh, this was uh, 13 hours ago. Seems like universal anger with Optus from all sorts of normal supporters. Maybe backing pirates, a rare miscalculation by friend Axelrod. Optus, what's that? And then he says afterwards, ah, yes, thanks. Of course, I meant POTUS, as in President of the United States. Somehow iPad changed my spelling. Should have checked, sorry. Been there too, Rupert. <laughs> Been there too. I don't uh, you just picture him sitting back in this big leather chair and like, smoking a cigar and drinking scotch and writing all these crazy tweets. Going, and like, damn, you autocorrect. <laughs> yeah, but just sort of embracing the, uh, the this uh, whole new world to him. Uh, it will be interesting to continue to follow him <laughs> over the next uh, little while, see what else he might have to say. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I will be following too. I, I've now, I, I think I said before, I don't know if I'm going to follow him. And I think I am just out of plain curiosity at this point. Yeah, it, it definitely is pretty interesting. Um, now, uh, another piece of news in the social networking world, I guess, uh, when someone uh, copies you, that is considered a uh, flattery. And this is happening right now with a popular social network, uh, Pinterest, which we really haven't talked a lot about, Sarah. Do you use Pinterest on a regular basis? I am a Pinterest member, yes. I don't use it on a regular basis. And I'm not sure why. Um, I don't have a good reason. This is, uh, for anybody who's not familiar with Pinterest, it's still actually invite only now, although um, it's pretty easy to get an invite. And the idea is sort of pinning things that you like and it, you come across online almost like an online scrapbook of sorts. But not only that, you can follow other people for uh, certain design inspiration or let's say, you, you know, you're planning a party or something and you're kind of looking for certain looks. It's it's almost like pulling, well, I want to say pulling looks, that's a fashion term, but it's a, it's, it's a way to, to bring a lot of inspirations, many of them design-based and certainly all visual-based together in one place and then share them socially, if that's mm. a good enough description of Pinterest. Um, I'm not so big into design these days. I certainly don't have enough money to buy a bunch of like cool designer stuff that I see online. So maybe that's my problem. And I don't plan a lot of parties. Uh, but uh, Pinterest is is really exploding in popularity. I, oh, it's I, massive. Any of my friends are using it regularly and not just women. I mean, men and women for all sorts of different reasons. Yeah, just uh, the uh, Read, Write, Web, web uh, post that, uh, or article that I linked to, uh, they have uh, said that Pinterest is already valued at more than $200 million, which I find hard to believe because it is relatively new. Uh, now, the interesting part of this story, as I mentioned, uh, in terms of someone copying Pinterest, is that uh, there are a couple of brothers in Germany who have done this before. They copy big trends or uh, big technology websites that have launched. They give them a new name and they sort of rip them off and create their own services. And they've sold many of these services in the past. Past. Um, in 1999, they sold uh, a service that they created called Orlando, which is um, uh, was again uh, sort of a spinoff. They also sold a Groupon clone. Uh, make they make a lot of money doing this, and they've recently recently launched a service called Pinspire, which is kind of like Pinterest. Mm -hmm. And if you go to Pinspire, um, the front it looks page, just like it. Yeah, it looks 
almost I yeah think. I mean we're toggling back and forth there it's like hey direct rip off anybody I mean even down to the way that, it, that the logo is written I don't know I'd be mad if I was Pinterest I mean it's worth worth mentioning too Amber that uh, this company um, uh, yeah they, they, it's a uh, I think it's three brothers actually um, at okay. Sam War, it's the last name Sam War. they've been selling these these clone companies to the original companies they sold Alondo, which is like an eBay spinoff, to eBay for fifty million, and then they sold Groupon to Groupon, <laughs> a Groupon clone rather called City Deal, and then a Zynga clone called Plinga to Zynga. And I guess the what they can, what their strength is, is that many of these companies that you know we just talked about were big in the U.S. before they were big worldwide. And, and maybe would never be big worldwide. Uh, just, you know, the markets are sometimes different, you know, when you're looking at a global market. And if you can have a clone that scales rapidly outside of the U.S. to a, a company that has most of its user base inside the U.S., sometimes you can kind of strong arm them into buying you in order to get more users. I mean, it's not, I wouldn't say it's, I don't know. I mean, it's, it, it seems unethical to me, but at the same time, I wonder if there are instances where the companies are sort of happy this happened because someone else is doing some of their scaling work internationally. Well, I didn't realize that this was as common as it is. You know, I heard about this happening uh, with Groupon, for example, where uh, many different countries before Groupon actually expanded, uh, they created their own Groupon-like services and then Groupon came in with a ton of money and started gobbling up these different services and kind of bringing them back home. Uh, so they followed with the corporate uh, the corporate direction and branding of the company. But I didn't realize it happened at a level of some of these newer services like uh, Pinterest. It looks like Pinsbuyer so far, uh, based on this article, it doesn't even yet have that many users. Uh, they're saying about 11,000 uh, 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 fans on its Facebook Facebook page so far. So just kind of slowly uh, growing. But interesting to see almost a, you know, a business model where it's all about ripping off services that have become, uh, you know, the hottest startups in the Western world. Yeah, it, it's, uh, it's, if I were Pinterest, the people behind Pinterest, I'd be pretty miffed. Then again, at the same time, there's probably more to it. I mean, I mean, this this company has had a lot of success in the past, and I just don't think they care if anyone's mad. And you know, they're based in Germany, and if they've got a following, and um, you know, Pinterest still being invite only, and maybe the word isn't out uh, in Germany, for example, you know, or, or some other European country, then this is the best way to get the same experience or a very similar one. Very bizarre, Sarah. Very bizarre. Uh, so uh, anyway, uh, if you're looking for a way to make some money, maybe this is it, Sarah. I've never really thought about it. Yeah. Uh, just uh, rip off a new social service. And because Pinterest has been valued at, at $200 million, I mean, if they were to gobble up something like Pinspire for these brothers, what an amazing initiative. You know, say, give it to them for a few million dollars, haven't done a lot of work. It's uh, uh who knows, Sarah? Who knows yeah. what will happen? I, it's, yeah, we will We will be following this case closely and let you know uh, if Pinterest decides to buy Pinspire or sue them <laughs> or something in between. <laughs> Quick reminder that uh, we record the social hour live on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. We're back to what seems to be a pretty normal show. Regular time, Amber's in Canada, I'm in Petaluma. Um, so thanks to everybody who watches our live show. But of course, if you don't watch us live, that's okay. You don't have to miss anything because we are on demand in many different ways. In fact, I, I suggest that you subscribe to our show. We've got video and audio feeds, depending on how you like to, to uh, absorb our content, a bunch of different ways. And that's the best way because... If you subscribe, which of course is free, um, it's funny. I was at CES over uh, you know last week, and I mentioned something about subscriptions, and the guy I was talking to said, "Well, so how much is it?" And I said, "Well, no, it's free. You know, it's like RSS." He says, "No, but I mean, so if you if I just want to always get the show, what is the cost?" I said, "No, no, no, it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a free subscription. <laughs> Subscribe is still is still a, a sort of a weird word to people. Um, most of you know." about subscribing, but it is free. I just want to make sure that that's very clear. Our website is twit.tv slash TSH. That's where you can get all the subscription links. Um, we also just have our, our shows embedded. Every, every show uh, has an episode page. You can watch the video straight from there. We also have a show notes area. So anything that Amber and I talk about in the show, we will link to there. So if you ever miss anything or you want to go back or you need a link, 
don't worry, we will add those into our show notes. Um, and a reminder that you can always email us at thesocialhour at twit.tv. We get a lot of great ideas from you every day. So thanks so much for emailing and, and keep it up. All right, before we move on to some of our other newsworthy stories of the week, let's thank Squarespace for sponsoring this episode of The Social Hour. Um, I use Squarespace for my blog, and I have to tell you, it is pretty much the easiest way to create a blog or just a high-quality website for a lot of reasons that makes you look like a pro without you needing to have really any design or programming or CSS skills at all. Now, if you have those skills, Squarespace allows you to, to hack up code to your heart's desire, but you don't actually need uh, to know anything. In fact, if you go to squarespace.com, um, there's an examples area. Yeah, so that's that's a, gives you just, just an idea of a very sim, a simple way um, that uh, Squarespace starts to let you kind of put some stuff together, create, create a title, add some links, move stuff around. Um, this is one of their tutorial videos. You can see that you can you can easily just uh, with, with the um, with the little uh, the, the bar down at the bottom, you can expand your site or collapse depending on the way that you want it to look. So these are, the, and this is just a, a very basic basic theme that Squarespace provides. If you go to uh, their examples area at squarespace.com, you can look through how many people have used Squarespace for a variety of reasons. Uh, you know, maybe they want to sell artwork, maybe they're photographers, maybe they're hardcore writers, they're doing creative writing type stuff. Uh, People who have uh, podcasts, for example, um, Totally Rad Show is actually a good example. They um, they embed um, each of their video episodes, with, we, you know, with little links back um, to to their show, uh, and it works really well. So you can see that Squarespace is a great solution for a variety of different websites. It's not just blogging. Um, they also have some really good widgets too, Twitter and Flickr, and uh, you can you can. You can make your site very dynamic, even if you're not updating every day, which is a problem that I have. Uh, but my Squarespace site is changing all the time because I'm on all these other social networks um, and I've got great widgets. So here's what you do. If you want to try out Squarespace, you can try it out for free. Two weeks, put together a website, see how you like it. If you like it, uh, then use the code SOCIALHOUR1. That one means January. It's just the way that we kind of keep track of who's signing up. SOCIALHOUR1 is your code to get 30% off for three months. So you've got those two weeks completely free. Make a Squarespace website, see if you like it, and if you're ready to go forward, then use SOCIALHOUR1 and you get 30% off for three months. It's a really great deal. Um, Squarespace is awesome. Really good customer support too. Um, I really love those guys. Um, they are on top of stuff. They can help you. And we thank them so much for sponsoring this episode of The Social Hour. All right, moving on to some stories around. Oh, Amber, before we get to the stories, can we just, can I just ask you a question? <laughs> because I, we, we talk a lot about uh, Twitter etiquette. I mean, on online etiquette in general, but Twitter specifically, because I think it's a different beast than the other guys. There's there's a certain art to tweeting, um, because you don't want to be too self-promotional, you don't want to be too insidery, uh, you don't want to upset people, but you want to be yourself. We've talked a lot about, um, it's just kind of striking a balance. And I found over the weekend that I had a bit of an issue, because I think that many people associate you and me with tech or social media or um, news, that sort of thing. I see myself uh, added to Twitter lists all the time, and those are usually the main categories that I'm added to. But then what happens when uh, I'm watching a football game that I'm really excited about, and I tweet like 20 times about that game? <laughs> you know, I notice that people stop following me, and it's unfortunate because I want to, I'm excited, so I feel like that's being myself. Um, and it's not being self-promotional, you know, and I know that that turns people off, but it's not as focused as people may want me to be. I had the same problem um, uh, uh, tweeting about, you know, entertainment stuff last night, kind of Hollywood-based stuff. So what do you do in that case? Do you, do you make multiple Twitter accounts? Do you just say, I'm only going to tweet about certain stuff so that I don't, you know, piss anybody off? Or do you just say, oh, well, you know, I'm not for everybody? 
Yeah, it's a really interesting question. I know you were tweeting up a, a storm on the weekend, Sarah. I didn't understand any of it because I don't follow sports that much. That's yeah. my little secret. Yeah. Uh, uh, nonetheless, I, you know, it just doesn't bother me when people tweet a lot. So I, I would never think of unfollowing someone, especially if it's kind of a rare thing that they would tweet a lot about a certain subject. And to be honest with you, I think for most people who tweet about something different than maybe is kind of, you know, the, the, the core uh, message that they're sending across, I think it's interesting to get that other side, the other side of, you know, what someone cares about and they're interested in. I know on PATH, for, for instance, I'm really into learning more about food and um, eating healthy foods and understanding, you know, why you would eat organic versus not eating organic. And uh, some people can get a little put off, like you said, because they want you to be tweeting about the same thing or uh, sending out messages about the same thing. And my only advice here, I think, is you just have to have thick skin and know that if you don't do it all the time, it's not a bad thing to do. Right. Uh, and those people are easily irritated. You don't need them following you anyway, Sarah. That would be my advice. <laughs> all right. Well, good. <laughs> I guess I guess that's the answer. Um, okay. You never do that. You're, you, I mean, you of all people, I find you don't tweet that much at all. Um, well, I'm glad that you feel that way. Uh, I feel like I tweet all the time. You know what I end up doing a lot of is replying to other people. I do a mm -hmm. lot of reply. I mean, I think I'll tweet once in a while, and then I get a bunch of responses, and so there's a lot of back and forth that you would see if you went to my profile. Um, but otherwise... A lot of that's hidden, which is, I, 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 I know you do that a lot. Um, I, I notice some, there are some people that I'll follow. That I think, gosh, they've really been, I don't know, they, are they even on Twitter anymore? And I look and I see, you know, they're just replying a lot. So they're having a conversation with people. Um, they're just not blasting out so much. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm not sure. Um, I, I, yeah, I guess I, I like your advice, Amber, it's just, just to be myself. Have, that's, that's what I wanted yeah. to hear. <laughs> but Sarah, do you think that people are, would they unfollow you perhaps because they don't like the team that you're cheering for? Is that possible? Because that happens in politics all the time, right? If someone finds out that, you know, they're following someone who all of a sudden starts getting political on Twitter and they're really liberal and that person's a conservative, they're like, I'm not following you anymore. Is it, is it that extreme in, in football? I don't know. Probably. And if that's yeah. the case... <laughs> then I don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. That's what I would assume it could be. Because yeah. I mean, I really try not to, like, get people riled up. I mean, my, my, my goal is never to be like, your team sucks, even if I might think it a little bit. I, I wouldn't say that. And that's also, I, you know, I try not to get political for the same reasons. But and I think most of us feel that way. Some people just don't care. You know, or they say, I, you know, I have an agenda or I have a, a very strong conviction about something and it doesn't really matter. I mean, it's certainly not antagonistic on my part. But if somebody unfollows me because they don't like the 49ers, we probably wouldn't get along anyway. <laughs> yeah. Okay, don't mess with Sarah when it comes to football. Note to self. Uh, okay, let's move on um, for our social tip this week. I think this is interesting for people who are tasks, tasked with managing a social media account for a company or maybe they want to grow their own personal brand and you want to figure out what companies out there are doing a really good job of building up their online communities. The service is called socialmedia-live.com. It's a really simple website and it what it does, it's constantly updated uh, based on how much the growth there is on certain Facebook pages that are some of the top pages uh, in the world. So you'll see, and then you can then refer back to those pages to see why maybe that growth has happened and what's spurred it and learn a little bit more about building community in the social world. So again, interesting for a certain group of people um, that uh, want to know more about uh, growing, uh, growing profiles within the Facebook environment. Yeah, there are some statistics freaks well, you're not freaks, but people people who love to crunch numbers, they love to know why something uh, is gaining steam. It's all it goes into that sort of what's trending online um, that that a lot of people do care about. Social Media Live is in beta right now, um, but their website seems to work pretty well. Some of the big uh, the the big gainers, at least in Facebook uh, uh, pages popularity, are celebrities um, or you know the YouTube page or even the Facebook uh, page itself so some of it is okay well these are people who have a huge following anyway so if they get a thousand new um, uh, subscribers or fans I mean to me that would be like wow that's a lot to somebody like Adele the singer it's just a blip because she has mm. so many already but it is interesting uh, not only who is um, 
you know, who has the most followers on Facebook, the mo the most fans, the most likes, but who's rising fast, you know, who may have fallen off. That's all, that's all interesting. And they, they do uh, social media life. I was like, well, how do they, how do they put all of this together? I mean, what is their methodology? They actually do have a section where they explain it. They've got world leading pages. Um, that's sort of one, um, one category and it's measured by how many likes something has. And then you've got like a separate group, which is fast growing pages. So that's all pages that have at least a thousand likes to just kind of put them in the running. Um, and then how, how fast they go up and down. Um, and then you've got the third group, which is smaller pages. So less than 1000 likes, um, which of course has uh, the most amount of pages. And it's interesting. I don't know how much I will refer to this regularly, Amber, but I I know that there are people that this will really appeal to. Yeah, I mean, I, I, again, I think it's more for that person who that's their job. You know, social media has become part of their job and they need to keep up on the latest trends and growth in certain areas as well. And from that standpoint, I think it's interesting. Or if you're uh, thinking about launch, launching a Facebook page and uh, you want to know more about some of the more successful pages, it's also helpful. Uh, now, Sarah, I know we're going to uh, get into another item here and we're going to talk a little bit about Sweden, which is one of my favorite topics. But I have to say, I just got an email from Nicole, um, who I believe has been the one who's been keeping track when I sneeze on air and uh, cutting together little uh, pieces of that uh, video. She just wrote me and said, did you just sneeze on the social hour? What's with running off screen to sneeze? Oh. Glad she's keeping track of this. I know. I'm sorry, Nicole. Next time I'll try to stay on camera, but no promise. I know. <laughs> you know, why so shy, Amber? You've been so good know. up until now. I've been so good. I don't know. I'm just, like, you know. It's like a delayed stage fright. I think just, <laughs> just sneeze it out. Just let it out. Just yeah. let it out. We'll sneeze together. <laughs> Sarah's, it's Sarah's turn. This is one of my uh, resolutions. I shall not sneeze on camera anymore. I'm too horrified by those videos. Um, all right. So, uh, Sarah, I don't know if you remember on Net at Night, but Leo and I used to talk about Sweden all the time. No, uh, I had no idea. Mm -hmm. It's Why? kind of an obsession of ours. We both wanted to go to Sweden at one point and just uh, think, think it's a really cool country. A lot of interesting things happening there um, culturally. Um, just kind of fascinated with uh, uh, what happens in that country. Everything from how uh, you know they, their government is run to some of the, the things that are happening in the arts community. So I thought this would be appropriate. Um, it looks like with the official Twitter account for Sweden, what they've done is, and I think this is a, a great idea for any country looking to uh, really expand uh, the voice of that country is they actually turn over the account to a different citizen every single week to tweet from that particular account so you can get kind of a behind the scenes look at the people of Sweden. This is awesome. So it sounds like um, right now if you go to it's just at Sweden on Twitter um, the featured Swede uh, which is has a new Swede every week uh, this one uh, I am just your average lesbian truck driver Okay, well, there she is, Hannah. Hannah's her name, but the week before, uh, it was somebody else. And you might think, well, I mean, is this sort of like a, is it a, I don't know, like a PR scheme to make people be interested in Sweden? You know, sort of like, what does the country get out of it? And, and, and are these tweets censored to make it seem like Sweden's the best place in the world? And actually, the answer is no. Um, if you go back in time a bit, um, there was one... Uh, um, I, th I believe he was an immigrant uh, and or for whatever reason minority in Sweden and, and had a lot of things to say not positive about the country and homogeny and feeling um, out of place. So to me, I, I mean, this is, you know, it's funny when you say that you and Leah are sort of obsessed with Sweden, this is kind of like a cool Sweden thing where you think, gosh, this would just never fly. Yeah. I mean, in my country... I can ne never imagine something like that happening. Um, it would just, I don't know, it just doesn't seem like an experiment that would go well. Um, I know that they had a sheep farmer um, in the, at the Sweden account a while back who was posting pictures of his sheep and his farm and, and he lived um, um, on, a, on a farm outside of Stockholm, a tiny, tiny little place, small population. And, and it was really an interesting look into his life uh, you know, I mean, how would you know this guy otherwise? It would be hard to find him online. So I think it's really fascinating. 
Yeah, it's kind of fun to see them do this. It looks like Hannah is causing some controversy as well because she is a truck driver. Uh, oftentimes, uh, she has been behind the wheel on her smartphone uh, while she's in the car, and people are sort of starting to complain and attack her about that. So she's uh, voicing uh, um, what she's actually doing and saying that uh, most of the time she's not driving. She says mm-hmm. most of the time, not all the time. <laughs> but uh, I don't think this is very moderated. And based on the BBC article, it looks like uh, they really don't try to control too much what the person says, just letting the conversation kind of flow. And you're right, this is not going to work in many places. No. Um, however, uh, good to see it work in Sweden. Now, Sarah, I have a question about this, and I never thought of it till just now, and I don't know if you know the answer. Because they're changing the profile picture, um, depending on the person who is tweeting for that week, when you go back to tweets from a week ago wouldn't that person picture still show up or is the picture tied to the is it kind of uh time stamped based on the date the tweet went out no you know? I, I don't think it is at all i think that uh i know on my profile when i change my picture any tweet that's archived has my current picture um sort of mm-hmm. the same way it works on facebook it just changes for your entire profile so That would be kind of weird, potentially, if somebody's talking about his sheep farm, but you're actually looking at a picture of a truck driver who's even a different gender. So, yeah, I don't know. You know, another thing, and maybe I'm totally missing the point here, but, and I know that this is probably somewhat tied into tourism because tourism is a huge, huge, um, huge deal in Sweden. Uh, They make a lot of money off tourism every year, but why is this all in English? Hmm. I mean, I people who speak so many, English are certainly not the only tourists who would go to Sweden. It's easy for me to read, enough. but what about Swedish? Hmm. I guess they want to attract the majority from outside Sweden. I'm just guessing. I don't really know the answer to that, but uh, it's a good question. Uh, anyway, a really cool experiment. Uh, so if you want to follow along, just uh, uh, you can uh, subscribe and follow at Sweden and uh, see who's going to be up next week. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it is a really cool idea. Go Sweden. As always, you're at the forefront of technology. Uh, let's go to some of our viewer feedback. Ian, so uh, last week, I guess, God, the weeks are just rolling together. We had, we remembered fondly, our 26260 social jingle uh, that, uh, that we had received way back when social hour just started. And Ian, who made that jingle, wrote in and said, hey, thanks for reminding me too. He's uh, Sh- Shaky Snakes online at shakysnakes.com. Um, and he's so cool. He made us a little uh, social hour jingle. I mean, for, not just for our, our Google voice number, but for the show in general. So I thought we'd play it because it's really cute. The social hour, the social hour, with Amber MacArthur and Celine. Increase your social networking power every week with the social hour. Yay! I love it. Isn't that cute? That's great. I don't know if, uh, Ian, if you don't like the word cute, I think it's really tough and and hardcore. Um, That's awesome. Thank you so much for sending us that. That is a great jingle. You're very talented. And, you know, I should give him a little plug because I spent a little time at Shaky Snakes. It's actually a Tumblr account, um, but it's just shakysnakes.com. And Ian has, um, he's kind of, he's, he's, a, he's a music guy. So he posts a lot of uh, stuff about music and videos and that sort of thing. But he also has links to both uh, Bandcamp page and SoundCloud page. Um, now, uh, Bandcamp, okay, so we're looking at his SoundCloud page now. SoundCloud, for anybody who's, if you go back to that, uh, for anybody who's not familiar with either SoundCloud or Bandcamp or how the two are different, SoundCloud is more about posting tracks. Uh, Leo and I have talked about it a bit on iPad Today because uh, his son uses SoundCloud. Uh, he makes electronic music. Um, and that's a great place to, you know, you compose something, Uh, you compose and then you can post it uh, on SoundCloud. It's very easy, social, way to share with people, um, uh, share links uh, on a variety of different social networks. Bandcamp is a little bit different because it's more focused on albums. Um, So music, they say music and merchandise. So Shaky shaky Snakes here um, put together an EP actually. It's called Glowing um, late last year. So there's five tracks here. Um, now, he could have said, uh, $5, please, uh, for this. But he actually, um, and, and um, 
this is just completely up to him, said, you know, you just pay what you want. Um, sort of the Radiohead model. Um, when Radiohead did this with their album a couple of years ago, pay me a dollar, pay me ten dollars, just I appreciate it. What I want you to do is listen to the music and I don't want uh, money to be any sort of a barrier. So uh, Bandcamp, and that works with merchandise as well if an artist wants to sell merchandise. Bandcamp is great if you've got more, uh, you know, discography that you want to uh, disseminate with as many people as possible online. And it really takes uh, the record labels out of it, which for many people is totally prohibitive um, and puts the money into the um, the hands of the artists. So two really good social networks that are music based. If you if you don't know about them, definitely check out Bandcamp. That's Bandcamp.com and SoundCloud.com. Um, and thank you to Ian, aka Shaky Snakes, for sending us our awesome jingle. Um, I love it. Me too. And you're really so, talented. I listen when to are we going to play it's it, really Sarah? Good. Like, is it going to be the beginning of the show or? I don't know. What should we do? Hmm. Should we play? I, I, I'm now our beginning of the show music. We don't usually play it when we're live on uh, oh, yeah. when we do our show. But for anybody who watches the show in its entirety, when we post it, it's kind of like it's kind of rocking. Yeah. So we could change things up, or this could be maybe our playing out music. I don't know. Or it could be even, our, we could have, a, I don't know if we have room, but we could have it as our little jingle before we go to our uh, email feedback. That's true. kind of cute. I'm into and it. And that could let people know that, you know, hey, we're going into the mode. This is your space. This is your time. And um, thanks to Ian for uh, hooking us up with some great intro music. Let's do that next week. All we'll right. We'll see how it goes. All right. Thank you, Ian. Um, and if anybody wants to send us like a... Uh, well, okay, I'm going to stop asking for things. Uh, we'll start small. We'll start small. Uh, we also got an email from Chris Taylor who sent us a link to... Okay, so I'll preface this with uh, lip dubs. You either know what a lip dub is or you don't. If you do, no introduction needed. But if you don't, this is the idea where you lip sync a song, any song, somebody else sang. Um, and the idea is to get uh, either, I guess it could be an individual, but more often a group of people together with a single shot recorded on video. Then you add in the music later. Um, you would be singing along to music and then you would, you would add the music so that the audio is nice later. And the idea that everyone memorizes the song so there aren't a lot of video cuts, it's all, it's all one shot. Um, I have participated in lip dubs in the past, Amber, have you ever participated in a lip dub? You know, I have not. So, uh, you know what? If you have anything going on in Toronto, you want to do a lip dub, I'm game. Okay, good. Well, we have some competition because, as Chris Taylor sent us, um, a, a school, which looks like it covers uh, quite a few grades, um, young, younger to more of like a high school age, uh, the Friends School in Lisburn, which is in Northern Ireland, put together a lip dub. No, Chris sent it to me, and my immediate reaction was, Ugh, lip dubs, yeah, you know, we've been doing those for, well, how many years now? However, they have quite an epic one. Um, we won't play the whole uh, video because it's about 11 minutes long because they put together a variety of songs. Colin, do you have that video? Yes. Um, a variety of songs together, but it is um, thousands, well, maybe about a thousand kids. Video? Um, that are, I, I could explain it, but it's much cuter if you see it. If you just, uh, if you fast forward a little bit, because there's a little bit of like an introduction here, um, even a little bit more, you get into the play. Okay, so this is, uh, of course, the Friends theme. Um, although it's, it was a song before it was Friends. Um, and they, all these kids are, are participating, and they're really cute. I mean, everybody's really into it. And then if you, uh, if you fast forward a little bit more, you jump ahead a few minutes, um, it actually, yeah, so we're sort of like into, I don't know, uh, the gymnastics. The kids look a little bit older. Um, and there are a lot of kids participating in this. And they're not all singing, but they're all pretty enthusiastic. I just love this. I mean, it's quite, a, quite an effort um, and probably really, really fun for these kids to do. Okay, we don't have to play the whole thing. That's good. You get the idea. I love this. Thank that you to Chris. Cool. And this is brand new. I mean, I, I looked at their YouTube page because I thought, well, was this recorded, you know, three years ago or something? No, I mean, it, it, at least <laughs> it just got uploaded uh, yesterday. Um, oh, wow. Well, I think actually it was the, the 12th, so a couple of days ago. Isn't that so funny how we're so particular about, you know, if I see something that's like a week ago, it's old. Ah, oh, Sarah. 
so funny. I know. Social world, we're very, uh, it's very uh, time sensitive. <laughs> very. I Well, yeah, it's true. It's like something six month old. Well, if we didn't see, yeah. if we didn't see it already, then, then it's just old. Now, I will say that some folks in chat thought that that was cute. And other folks say, oh, God, this is lame. But you have to remember, you know, these are... These are kids at a school. I mean, they're they're. It, it looks like a private school of of sorts, and they're all participating. And you know, some of these kids are younger, and to get a lot of attention. I mean, this article Chris found uh, the, uh, via the BBC's website, so they've gotten quite a bit of attention. So you just got to say, you know, you go, kids. I hope yeah, that they're I like eight. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, cut the kids some slack. Exactly. Uh, all right. Now, here's someone that you don't have to uh, cut any slack to. Uh, I did not uh, make this story up. I went onto Twitter about an hour or so ago, and I asked if uh, anyone had see seen an interesting tweet for our Tweet of the Week. Uh, got a, uh, a great message from someone named William, William Murray, who goes by at William Murray on uh, Twitter. Sorry, William McMurray. And uh, he had said that I should check out the social media mishap with Boner's Barbecue. Oh, Okay. Real company. And I guess uh, Scott Stratton from Unmarketing had written a blog post about this, so you can check his blog out. Um, so this is our tweet of the week. This is Boner's Barbecue. This is what they say. Dear Stephanie S., we are truly sorry. It was a bonehead move on our part, but more importantly, it was rude. And then dot, 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 they linked to their Facebook page. Now, what this is about, Sarah, and everybody who is uh, listening, is that uh, this woman, Stephanie, came into Boner's Barbecue with her husband. They had some food. And uh, Stephanie wasn't all that pleased with their food, so she went on to Yelp, and she made kind of a, a review that wasn't particularly harsh, uh, but in turn, um, the person who owns Boner's Barbecue uh, proceeded to uh, post on his Facebook account a picture of Stephanie and call her a very unflattering name that starts with a B and uh -huh. uh, said that she didn't tip at all, which she disputes. And so this story has really <laughs> been going on for uh, a few days now, this big fight between Boner's Barbecue and this particular woman. And we're seeing this more and more where, uh, you know, people are going in, customers are going into stores, they're not being treated well, and the company, instead of kind of apologizing and trying to make things better, just lashes out at them, which is never a good thing, Sarah. Wow, yeah, I mean, talk about bad, bad, bad move, Boner's. Uh, yeah. I guess that, I mean, <sighs> social media is one of the, these things crop up every once in a while because it's one of these ways that people feel comfortable um, being themselves. And that's f almost always a good thing. But, well, it's sometimes a good thing. But then you have these situations where you've got a customer and... If you're a business and you've got, I don't know, something has gone wrong with the two, the last thing you would want to do is make fun of them online. Because even if they were a horrible customer, I mean, you figure if they had a bad experience, you know, you might never see them again. Or if you really value um, their, you know, their, um, their uh, pa pa patronage. <laughs> Uh, then you know you try to make it make it good, but to but to be rude to them online is just it seems like the worst idea in the world. Then again, it's probably an employee of Boner's Barbecue who was miffed, and it just happened. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's made uh you know been in the press for a, a while now. It happened in Atlanta. Um, like I said, I've seen this kind of thing happen before, and I think we're going to see a lot more of it, especially as companies get out there and they start engaging in social media and they just don't really think about it. It's sort of an afterthought because it's no longer just these big companies who have these really strict social media policies and guidelines. You know, it's these one-off stores, and they don't have a lot of people managing the account, and so things slip through the cracks. Uh, and uh, it's particularly unfortunate. And uh, hopefully, uh, they make up it some point. Um, although I know on it based on the Twitter account, it seems that uh, there's still a lot of feuding going on, Sarah. Who knows what's happening, but uh, not a good uh, example to follow if you're in the business of trying to uh, get more customers. Definitely. Wes in our chat room says, seems like a PR stunt to me. You're talking about it. All of a sudden, people know the brand more than they might have five minutes ago. So I can't rule that out either. But pretty bad publicity. I mean, I don't know that I would, if I had a choice between barbecue places, that I would go to a place that I could be ridiculed at um, if my service was less than stellar. Uh, they did in their Facebook post uh, to Stephanie uh, offer to refund her, mon her money uh, fully. So, so there's that. So, 
Very, very strange. Um, but uh, anyway, thank you so much for to William for sending this and for uh, Scott for writing a great blog post about uh, uh, why this is entirely wrong. Boners Barbecue, eating their tweet. And that is our tweet of the week. <laughs> they didn't really eat it. Uh, eating their lunch, <laughs> uh, that sort of doesn't work either. But I, I think you need to avoid uh, thinking too much about the name and little puns altogether. It's not going to be PG anymore. <laughs> true, true. I'm going to stop while I'm ahead. Uh, but I do want to remind you that we love hearing from you. We try to feature as much of your feedback, your ideas, your questions, your comments as possible on every show. So, the social hour at twit.tv is our email address. Write us early and write us often. You can leave us a voicemail. The number is 2626 S O C I A L. Just type in those corresponding numbers um, on your phone. That's our Google Voice number. Please leave us a voicemail. Uh, we love to hear your voice. We also love to see you. So, if you can, if you want to, if you have inclination, record a video, upload it somewhere, and then email us the link so that we can play your video in a future episode of The Social Hour. All right, Amber, get ready for your ratter fad. Uh, but first, we want to thank Audible. They're our second sponsor of this episode of The Social Hour. And Audible is amazing because if you uh, either commute a lot, uh, spend a lot of time uh, maybe walking uh, or at the gym or for whatever reason cannot be in front of a book reading like this, you can listen to books or even periodicals uh, using Audible. Audiblepodcast.com slash social hour is the website I want to give you because this is the way that you can actually get a free book. You sign up for Audible with this link. Again, I'll give it to you again for our audio listeners. Audible.com audiblepodcast.com slash social hour and you get a free audiobook. I always say it's like it's like stealing a book from the bookstore but you're not actually stealing you just get a free book. The idea is is that we all love reading and probably most of us wish that we read more. Now my problem is that I just don't feel I have time in a normal working day you know, to sit and read and look at the pages for a couple of hours, which is what I like to do. Because when I read, I want to read for a while. I don't want to just read a few paragraphs at a time. Or by the time I have time, I'm really tired. I'm in bed. You know, my eyes are heavy. It just doesn't work out for me. So instead of saying, well, I just don't read that much anymore. And I like to read novels. I like to read fiction. Although there's a lot of nonfiction on Audible as well. Um, I use Audible so that when I'm in my car, I'm a captive audience. I'm in my car for, gosh, a better part of two hours every day. I can get through a lot of book. When I'm at the gym, I can sort of, you know, stare out to space and not be sort of holding my book or, you know, even if you're not in the mood to read anything on your Kindle, your iPad, that sort of thing. Audible has the books read to you. A lot of different voices, kind of let your imagination go wild. Highly recommend it. If you're the kind of person who says, I wish I read more, you should really give Audible a try because it will help you read more. And it is reading. It's just in a different form, different form of media. Audiblepodcast.com slash social hour is the URL. And we thank them so much for sponsoring this episode. Amber, I'm excited for your router fad this week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sarah. You know, sometimes I'm on the internet and I think I'm very proud of, uh, you know, this wonderful internet where people can come together, exchange ideas. And then sometimes I'm kind of wondering, hmm, that's interesting. I don't know. I don't know what I think of this. And then it makes for a great rat or fad. And uh, this is one of those things. Um, this is a web connected robot that I read about on uh, Mashable. Uh, the robot's name is Ollie. And the idea of Ollie is that uh, Ollie <laughs> actually sends out smells. Uh, that it's connected to your computer. So let's say, Sarah, you tweeted me. And, uh, you know, every time someone from Twit tweeted me, I wanted to smell roses. Well, I have Ollie set up with some type of little oil. I guess, or something that's poured in. And then anytime I get a tweet, you know, the smell of roses comes out. Um, so uh, it hasn't been perfected just yet, but it's turning uh, the internet experience into a little bit like we've heard of smell o vision You know, people have always asked for smell o vision uh, It could be possible one day soon with the internet and all of your social communications. Okay. We, we, a lot to digest. It is. It is. This is actually something that uh, we, we, we talked about uh, last week on TNT um, and Tom brought it up. And it was it was it was originally, uh, you know, give your tweets a spearmint smell or something like that. Mm. So I went, so I don't want spearmint. But then, yeah, it, the idea is that you have control over the smells, right? Sure. That you know that 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 if Amber tweets at me, I could have a, a roses smell. I love the smell of roses. That would be great. 
But there's so many questions I have about this. Like, what if you tweet at me regularly? I mean, is like my office going to be just overcome with the smell of roses? You know, almost like a like a little, you know, like a like a fragrance spray type thing. Or, I, I mean, if the smell lingers, am I going to wrongly associate it with somebody else? Um, I don't know. I. I don't know, Sarah. I, this, I mean, I think we, the sense of smell is so strong. I mean, I, I still will smell a whiff of someone's cologne or a kind of soap, and it's like, wow, I'm back, you know, 20 years ago. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. So I, I see where that, that it, you know, it would be like a really strong connection. But I just, I just don't, I don't know if Twitter is the right place for something like this to work unless you, you either knew that somebody was only going to tweet once in a while so like when you smell that smell you go oh yeah it's my once in a while person or maybe if you just really like a scent i don't know i don't know yeah, how I, mean, I feel about this i know like it says in the article it could be for a facebook comment it could be uh, another social network for example um a like on instagram uh i think that if we have to put it into rad or fad i'm gonna have to put it into fad because i just don't see this kind of catching on however you know as kind of a gimmicky gift to someone who's really into social media i think it's pretty fantastic um they may not use it a lot but i think it would be definitely a conversation speech, uh, piece but i think uh definitely a little bit of a, a little bit of a fad Sarah I can't see using this on a regular basis well Ollie's cute um, I guess you can find out more if you are interested at Ollie so it's O-L-L-Y factory dot com um, maybe okay so I'm trying to think of why I, I think this is fad too absolutely Amber I, I don't think in smell a vision or smell a tweet or any you know that's like <laughs> that stuff idea. always so we get a good laugh and then nobody uses things like this but what if you had, I, I mean, a loved one who was really important to you and you never saw them and there would be it, 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 it's some sort of connection that even if it seems sort of silly would be meaningful. I, I, there are probably some people out there who say, you know, I could think of when this would come in handy. Now, I want to mm. smell bacon every time I hear from my grandma because she makes really good breakfasts <laughs> and my grandma doesn't tweet that often. Hey, I'm reaching. I'm reaching. Oh, that was a great one. <laughs> trying. I don't know. No, it's fat. It's fat. I tried. No, no, that was good. <laughs> or, you know, let's say that you... Because, you know, know, people's grandmas, you know, they're really top tweeters. I'm sorry. I can't, I can't hold back my laughter. But let's say maybe an ex-boyfriend who you really don't like anymore and you their clothes would come out and you would be reminded that they're trying to get in touch with you and you just need to stay away. Um, I don't know, Sarah. There are examples of maybe how this could be useful. And I'm, I think, you know, if someone had it at their house, I would definitely want to try it out. For heavy users like us and other people who probably listen to the show and uh, use social media a lot, it might be a little too much. Like their place, their homes can start to really smell strongly of one particular scent uh, if they're on social sites on a regular basis. All right. So two fads from us. Um, if you use Ollie, know anybody who does like it or hate it, please let us know because I'm probably not going to be trying this out anytime soon, but I am curious. Very curious indeed. Um, good rat or fat, Amber. I don't know where you come up with this stuff. Good one. It's a good one. Uh, well, we've come to the end of our social hour. Uh, just under an hour, actually. Uh, remember that we are live Mondays, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. Thanks to everybody who watched live today. It's always really fun uh, to be able to interact with the people who are live. But if you can't watch us live, you know where to go. Twit.tv slash TSH. All of our past episodes, all of our show notes, subscription links, everything there. Find our show on iTunes. If you like the show, give us a nice review. We always appreciate those too. All right, Amber. Well, uh, another week. Uh, another week down, and I guess we will see each other back here, same time, same place, next week. Yes, and uh, keep sending us your emails and uh, voicemails and uh, jingles and, and uh, whatever you can to continue to make the show uh, very interactive. So thanks for all that, and we'll see you soon. All right, everybody. See you next week.